Before we look at our first example, let's review the order of operations. First of all, number one, we must simplify parentheses, and then secondly, exponents. Third, we have to do multiplication or division, whichever one we encounter moving from the left to the right, and finally, addition or subtraction, working from the left to the right-hand side. Let's look at our first expression. We're going to evaluate this long line of numbers. But because of our order of operations, we know what to do first. First of all, we check for parentheses. There are none. We move to step two. We're going to simplify any exponents. We see we have an exponent here at the end, two to the third power. So we're going to rewrite this. Now, I know that this is going to look like quite a bit of writing. But if you do this each time, you'll avoid mistakes. So 25 divided by 5, remember the dot means times 6, plus 2 to the third power means 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. Now each time we work a problem like this, we start from the left-hand side. The second thing, we did our exponents. Now we're going to move on to multiplication or division, whichever one we encounter working from the left to the right. I start here on the far left. I see 25 divided by 5. So I'm going to simplify that. 25 divided by 5 is 5. I keep rewriting the rest of this, not simplifying, only simplifying one operation on each of these lines. Let's check again. Remember we said we can simplify multiplication or division from left to right. I start on the left-hand side. I see I have 5 times 6. So I can go ahead and simplify that. 5 times 6 is 30. I bring down the plus 8. Now it's obvious the only operation left here is addition. So I'll add these two numbers together. 30 plus 8 is 38. If you follow any other order, you're going to get a different solution, which is not correct. So you must memorize the order of operations again. Let's review. We're going to simplify whatever is in parentheses first, second, exponents, third, multiplication or division reading from left to right, and finally, addition or subtraction from left to right. We're ready for our next problem now. We're going to evaluate negative 4 to the third minus 2 to the 6th power. Now, remember, parentheses are very important because when a number is within the parentheses, it becomes the entire base. So the negative 4 is raised to the third power. On the other hand, since there are no parentheses here, 2 is the base and 2 is being raised to the 6th power. So now let's go back to our order of operations. It tells us to first simplify parentheses. But these are not really the parentheses with operations on the inside. These are parentheses that are just telling us that the negative 4 is the base. But it does have an exponent, which is our second step in simplifying in our order of operations. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative 4 to the third power is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Now this is a little special case. Because we have two exponents, we can go ahead and just do this at the same time. We can go ahead and write 2 to the 6th power as well. So it's minus 2, that's a negative minus sign, and we've got 6 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now the rest of it just to multiply this and see what our product is. 1, 2, 3 negative signs tells us we're going to have a product that's negative. 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. Minus 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2, 64. So here we have a negative 64 minus a 64 which gives us, remember we have to change our subtraction sign to addition, change the sign of the number being subtracted to the opposite sign, 
and then add as usual. The signs are the same, so we're going to add their numbers and take their sign. 64 plus 64 is 128. Since they're both negative, that gives us a negative sum. Negative 128. Let's look at our next problem. We've got quite a long expression here to evaluate. We've got 6 minus, notice the 8 minus 12 in the parentheses, raised to the second power, plus 8 divided by 2. We have to return to our order of operations. Remember the first step is to simplify any operation within a parenthesis. We see that we have a parenthesis right here, 8 minus 12. So let's go ahead and do that. Don't forget that when we're subtracting real numbers, we change the sign to addition, change the sign of the number being subtracted to the opposite sign that it is. So it becomes negative 12. If the signs are different, disregard the signs, subtract the smaller from the larger, 12 minus 8 is 4, take the sign of the larger in absolute value. Negative 12 has a larger absolute value than 8, so our number becomes negative 4. Don't forget that's within the parentheses being raised to the second power. Again, when working these problems involving the order of operations, we only do one operation per line to avoid mistakes. So let's recopy the rest of the line, plus 8 divided by 2. It doesn't take all that much time to recopy, but I know that it's tiresome sometimes. Okay, let's go on to our next step. We look here. Remember our second step when working with the order of operations is to simplify anything that has an exponent. I see I have negative 4 to the second power. Notice, very important right here, negative 4 is the base because it's within those parentheses. So what this means is that I have negative 4 raised to the second power, which means negative 4 times negative 4. That means I have two negative signs. When I have two negative signs, that gives me a positive product. So negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. This negative 4 squared becomes positive 16. Leave everything else just as is. So I'm going to bring down the 6. Notice there's a negative out front. Here's our negative 4 squared, 16, plus 8, divided by 2. Now that we have this line written, we can go to our next step in the order of operations, which is to simplify multiplication or division, whatever I encounter first working from the left to the right. I start here on my left. I have 6 minus 16. That's subtraction. Plus 8. That's addition. But I have here at the end 8 divided by 2. So this is the next operation I'm going to perform in this line here in this long expression. So I'm going to rewrite these first two, 6 minus 16 plus, and now this is the operation I'm going to perform in this line, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now that we've gotten rid of all of our exponents, all of our parentheses, and our division signs, we're ready for addition or subtraction from left to right. So we start here on the left-hand side, and I see I have 6 subtract 16. Remember, when we're subtracting real numbers, we change the subtraction sign to addition, change the sign of the number being subtracted to the opposite sign that it is. It's currently positive 16, we change it to negative 16. Now again, when we add real numbers, remember the rule, if the signs are different, disregard the signs, subtract the smaller from the larger, 16 minus 6 is 10. Take the sign of the larger in absolute value. Negative 16 has a larger absolute value, so that gives us a negative 10. We bring down then the positive 4. So our last line here, negative 10 plus 4, we're going to use the same rule here. The signs are different. Disregard the signs. You should be good at this by now. 10 minus 4 is 6. Take the sign of the larger in absolute value, which is negative 6. So this long expression up here simplifies down to negative 6.